Star Wars 7x7 episode 1763. Today we're going to continue talking about Dooku colon Jedi Lost and in particular some of the special audio delights that you will get to hear on this audio drama. Punch it! Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. So today we're going to dig into Dooku colon Jedi Lost, the new audio drama from Kevin Scott and Penguin Random House Audio. And once again, thank you to Penguin Random House Audio for sending me an advanced copy to check out. And, you know, I gotta say that it's one thing to be listening to this in the car, as, you know, one does. And another thing to say, you know, play it off your laptop or your computer or whatever, but... This really does lend itself to, you know, whether you do the earbuds, the earphones, whatever, this lends itself to a surround sound experience. And I got to thinking about this in terms of the conversation that I had with Ryan Shore, who's the composer for the music for Galaxy of Adventures and for Forces of Destiny, and how they create a virtual space in these audio productions so it sounds like you know things are coming from different locations as you're listening to them at least when he's doing the symphonic version of it it works much the same way in the audio drama for Dooku colon Jedi Lost and you know compared to other audio books that have been done by Penguin Random House Audio I would say that this one is absolutely richer in its implementation and that's by design of course because you know previous ones are just about you know, narrating the audiobooks and you know adding awesome sound effects and that's great but this was designed to be a full audio only experience and so to make it as good as it could possibly be, there's going to be additional awesomeness that take it beyond the standard audiobook. For example, you know, from a music standpoint, yeah, you know, they all use John Williams's music, which is awesome, but in particular, this time around, there is a scene early on in the story where there is a festival taking place on Sereno, and as you listen to the background stuff going on, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on at this festival, apparently, so you just kind of have to imagine it. And you can hear very faintly in the background the strains of Lopti Neck, which, if you need the refresher, that would be the original song that was playing in Jabba's palace when Ula the Twi'lek dancer was dancing for Jabba before Jabba sent her to her untimely death. That's the song that was eventually replaced with Jedi Rocks in the 1997 special edition of Return of the Jedi, but Lopti Neck actually makes an appearance here on Dooku colon Jedi Lost, which, you know, once I heard the strains of it in the background of the the narration and the story and the dialogue going back and forth, it was like, wait a minute, did I just hear it? Roll it back, yeah, I certainly did, and you will too. There's also in a cantina that Asajj Ventress finds herself in playing in the background, and I don't know if it's uh, Fringer and Dan and the, and the modal nodes themselves, probably not, but <laughs> the song that is, or was, known as Cantina Band Number 2 on the soundtrack for A New Hope, which in Legends was eventually named Dune Sea Special, I don't think that's actually a canon name, but essentially it is the second song that you hear the modal nodes playing in the cantina, um, not the you know cantina theme that we all you know know and love. That's you know the most iconic one. It's the second song that they were playing. You get to hear that in the background too. But those are just little Easter eggy things. I mean, there's a sequence that is just so incredibly remarkable to me, and I'm gonna share a little bit of it with you. It's kind of creepy in a way, just, you know, fair warning. And also, I guess, spoiler warning as well, because this is coming from Dooku Jedi Lost, and I'm gonna have to tell you a little bit of the background of this in order for it to have any context whatsoever. So, under the guidance of Jedi Master Lean Kastana, who is, among other things, searching for Sith artifacts to remove from circulation in case Sith folks ever get a hold of them and use them to, you know, help return to power in the galaxy. She goes along with her Padawan Saifudius and also with Dooku to a planet called Asusto where they end up being captured by the Presagers of Hakote. And let's just simply say that 
those characters were actually mentioned very briefly in a Star Wars Adventures comic that was written by, surprise, surprise, Kevin Scott. They sound very spidery, and there's all this creeping moss that has cocooned them and whatnot, and it's just so soaked in the dark side that Dooku is starting to hear voices in his head, and there's a ritual that the Presagers are trying to conduct, and they need the blood of fresh people in order to have their eyes opened to see what futures lay ahead. So as they're getting ready to start this ritual, Dooku is starting to lose his mind a little bit. And this is what the audio sounds like for this section of the story. The futures were colliding, overlapping, my mind on fire. The cauldron opens. The Sith. Reborn. Only one voice was Reborn. true. Dooku! Lane? I've lost Saito. Lane, where are you? It's Dooku. What? I've chosen name. I am Pantis. You, sir, are high face. My only conclusion. My price. Is that it was a Sith Lord? The Sith Reborn. Extinct. Reborn. The rule of the Jedi. Now, I don't know about you, but, you know, in all honesty, it doesn't take a lot to push me to the edge as far as, you know, those sorts of things go. I'm not a big horror movie guy or anything like that. So, yeah, this, you know, you may think like, eh, it's no big deal. But for me, at least, this was, you know, enough to make my skin crawl. And again, I'm only just sharing with you a little snippet of it. So, yeah, I really want to give props to the production team. That would be Nick Martarelli and Kevin Thompson, who is also the director of the audio drama, as well as Paul Goodrich, who handled post-production and sound mixing from Merlin Studios. What a fantastic job they've done on this whole audio drama. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that'll give you an idea of what you're in for checking out Dooku Jedi Lost from an audio experience standpoint. I'm going to take a quick break and then uh, we'll do a quick update on our video production assistant. So stay tuned for that. Hey there. If you're enjoying all the coverage that I'm bringing you from Star Wars Celebration and what I do every single day for you at Star Wars 7x7, I hope you'll consider putting something in the tip jar at patreon.com slash sw7x7. $1, 327, 501 or more. Honestly, every little bit helps and every little bit is just as exciting as every other little bit. Please consider supporting me in the work of delivering Star Wars stories and interviews to you on a daily basis at patreon.com slash SW7X7. Welcome back. So I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who posted wonderful messages on social media, sent private messages, sent emails to say that they were hoping everything was okay with Padme, our video production assistant, a.k.a. our eight-month-old Australian shepherd puppy. Um... There were no issues over the last 24 hours, thankfully, knock on wood. Um, she has been behaving absolutely normally. You never would have known that she had a couple of epileptic seizures the day before. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's you know, a relief and a little, you know, nerve-wracking all at the same time. But we'll keep an eye and we're still waiting to hear about test results and all that stuff. But... You know, as things change and update, I will happily share them here on the show. And again, thank you so much for all the wonderful, you know, thoughts and kind words and wishes that you've shared. I appreciate it, and the entire Star Wars 7x7 family appreciates it as well. And that is going to do it for today's episode of the podcast. Thank you so much for joining me for it again and always. And may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it. <laughs>